What if Naruto was the brother of Ravel Phoenix Part 1? Naruto the Supernova by Crowfeast Naruto Phoenix Chapter 1. In the city of Kuo, inside the Kuo Academy there is tension in the air. More so for the devil faction that is residing there, an argument is taking place between two families. Also a member of the peerages is screaming at the man for daring to touch his king in love interest or lust interest in the case of his personality. The two people in question is a large-breasted and beautiful red-haired girl named Rias Gremory and a blonde-haired man named Riser Fenex. The two of them were having a tense staring contest and were arguing about the whole situation of the marriage arrangement. For the last time Riser I will not be marrying you. Dear Rias you know our bloodlines are thinning out and thus a marriage between pure bloods is needed to keep the bloodlines pure. He smirked arrogantly, after all, who is more worthy other than Riser? In the background Riser's peerage was watching this going on but one with blonde hair and drills while wearing a pink dress side. Seeing her brother act like this sickened her and made her seriously question why she ever became a member of his peerage in the first place. Maybe she would have been better off becoming her own king at this point, who knows. Dear Rias you should know that I can't let any slight against me stand. As a member of the prominent Fenex family I'm supposed to be the face of the clan. Meaning if I have to burn the rest of your peerage to ashes then I will drag you back to the underworld. He stood up from the couch and soon their auras were flaring in the room and both of their eyes turned red while Ravel is about to intervene until Grafia, a silver hair maid for the Gremory family and wife of the Lucifer, coughed to get their attention. Please both Ria Sama and Riser Sama show some restraint. Ria sat down on the opposite couch while Riser sat down as well. If the queen of Lucifer's peerage is telling me to sit down then who am I to deny? Lucifer Sama's peerage is full of monsters. Ravel finally having enough of her brother stepped forward. Rias, if you want out of the marriage arrangement there is someone you can talk to end it. Ravel, she glared at her brother, shut the hell up Riser. You have been embarrassing the family and I know if he heard what you have done he would break you for it. Don't bother denying it since mother should have done that sooner. Riser growled at her. As your king I'm telling you to be quiet or there will be punishment for your actions. Ravel snorted. I'm so scared. What are you going to do fuck your queen to death please have seen you try that already and pass out after an hour. Rias hearing something about earlier she asked. Ravel Sama what did you mean there is another way out of the arrangement. Ravel smiled and showed her a slip from the sleeve of her dress. It was a fenex symbol but it had some of its own design inside of the seal with it showing a fenex with a crown around it. This seal will take you to see my oldest brother, the supernova of the underworld and the strongest devil in existence. This caused the room to freeze in fear and shock or in the case of Asia and Issei confusion. Anyo. Asia was twiddling her fingers, excuse me Ravel Sama who is the supernova and why is he famous? She could tell from the reactions of the people in the room that this man was someone of great respect and fear among the people in the room. Meaning he was someone that garners the most respect if even the maid that was sent if shivering from the idea of this person. Not a surprise as you are new to the devil faction. You see the supernova of the underworld are known as the devil king is my oldest sibling and the man that is heralded as the strongest devil ever born. His name is Naruto Fenex and he is considered a devil among devils feared for his power and skills. In the history books he was known to be one of the main reasons the devil civil war ended on good terms for our faction. He is feared by the old faction due to his tremendous power and the charisma he possesses to rally people to his cause and promises of a changed underworld. I see. Asia could imagine someone that looked like Riser but they were more mature and refined than him and she blushed lightly about this. So how does one contact him? Do we just use that seal in your hands? Ravel nodded her head but hid the seal way in her sleeve. I have to organize some people first before we head to see my brother as he never leaves his home which is located deep in Fenex territory. It is a location that no devil can reach by normal means and given that Naruto Ni even has his own peerage he is considered to have the strongest members in the underworld. Turning to Grafia, you should know this Grafia Sama you saw the Scarlet Despair become a high class devil a couple of years ago, how about the Army Crusher, the Darkness, and many others becoming mid class devils as well. Hearing some of the names caused Rias to freeze up, he had the Scarlet of Despair? The Army Crusher, the Darkness, and others in his peerage? No wonder people hold him in such high regard. Her brother always talked about how powerful he was and how even Zekram Bael loved the man and considered him his own child. More that he treated him better than most could expect of one of the oldest devils in the underworld. At this same time, 
she heard rumors among the Maos or at least the ones she saw on a regular basis the supernova used to be close to her family and many others in the ruling families but something happened in the past to lead to him becoming distanced to everyone in question. More specifically her and her brother and sister-in-law for some reason. So when can we go see him? Riser growled, we are not discussing this anymore, we are ending this farce of a standoff and getting married now. He is about to reach for Rias aggressively until Grafia stopped him and froze his hand and snapped it off. Since we now know there is another option for Rias Sama other than a ratings game I shall inform Lucifer Sama about this development. Riser growled retreating through a teleportation circle and having most of his peerage doing the same. However, Ravel stayed behind looking at the woman in question. Look tell whoever you want that might want to tag along for this trip and make sure they are ready by tomorrow morning. As this is going to be a one-way trip and there is no other way to the manor other than by his teleportation circle. Rias nodded her head and saw the youngest of the Fenex family disappear and she went off to tell her family about this development and Sona because she is a history buff. It would make sense if she would want to meet a true legend in the flesh and someone that is held as almost a god in their race. Next day standing in the middle of the Kuo Academy orc room was a large group of people. First was Rias and her peerage where a brown-haired boy was mumbling to himself and thinking about punishing that asshole of a man supernova for allowing this farce to go on as long as it did. More in the sense Rias belonged to him and he would be damned to lose her just because this guy refused to undo the marriage arrangement. Next was a brown hair woman with a mature figure and purple eyes named Venelana Gremory talking to a blonde hair woman with blue eyes and an equally amazing figure. This was the matriarch of the Fenex family and the mother of Ruval, Ravel, and Riser Fenex and the supernova Naruto Fenex. The women were talking about how handsome the boy must have become since his time away and maybe if she has some grandbabies by now that she can spoil for her own self-interest. At this same time, Lords Gremory and Fenex were having their own discussions about politics they might need to bring up with Lord Phoenix's son. But the most shocking thing is that Sirzek Lucifer a male version of Rias and his wife were standing there with a bubbly black hair lolicon with large breasts wearing a magical girl outfit. This was Seraphal Leviathan and someone that is considered one of the strongest women in the underworld along with the most desired. She was harassing the hell out of her younger sister who stood taller than her and wearing glasses to complement her purple eyes and short hair. While not as busty as the other women in the group she was mature looking in the way she carried herself. The biggest difference is that Sona Sitri, Seraphal's sister, was watching her parents interact with her peerage and frown at the sight of Saji and his attitude. She would have to discipline him down the line and also make sure he is on his best behavior while at the supernova's home. She had all the books written about him and she honestly wanted to learn more about the man as a whole. But the most shocking guest in the room was a brown-haired man with a long beard and purple eyes who had an aura that radiated power. This man was Zekram Bale and he is considered the devil king of the underworld even though at times he would disagree with that title given that he knows that the supernova is the rightful king. He was just the face while the nova was the muscle. After everyone had a chance to start talking a bit, Ravel showed up with Riser and she stood in the middle of the room. Alright everyone I would like to go over the rules that big brother left behind for me on my sixth birthday when he gave me this seal. First rule. Keep your hands off the women in the house if you want to keep what is your manhood or your lives. Second rule. Do not steal anything if you want to keep breathing and do not attempt to try anything in his home. Third rule. My brother would like to stress that how the people in his home are acting is not any concern of yours and that if you dare to try and correct them he'll correct you. Turning to the room and saw everyone agree to the rules and then activated the symbol covering the room in a bright flash. Upon opening their eyes they saw they were in some lush forest land but standing before them is the largest house that most of the younger people have ever seen. It was a huge mansion that stood at the front with a large garden in the front yard warming the heart of Lady Phoenix as her oldest had a habit of wanting more flora and nature around his home and that is one of the reasons he moved up here. Zekrom smiles knowing he comes here to relax in this wonderful garden and talk to Naruto with a game of chess. Entering the grounds the group looked around at statues that covered the grounds of different figures that some of the nobles recognized as members of the Phoenix family of the past. One thing that stood out was the statue of the Lord and Lady and the inscription that was written at the bottom of the statue. Current heads of the Phoenix family. A loving and passionate mother, the one who gives it all for her children and tries her damnedest to instill the Phoenix pride. A father who being the face of the family knows he is just the image while the matriarch is the true power of the family. 
Reading the inscription Lord Gremory laughed at this. Seems your son has you pegged. Zekram snorted, like you and I can say we are any different at this point. The only man in the underworld that does not cower to the women around him is the supernova. Ah, that would be a great devil king compared to others. Who are you all? The group took their attention off the front of the guardian to see a ten-year-old child standing in front of them. He had blonde hair that was laid down over his head, dark red eyes with slits, wearing a black formal suit with a white shirt and black tie. He had black slacks and black fancy shoes but the thing that stood out is that he had an aura about himself. Something that made them ask. Who are you child? He growled at the Fenex matriarch. I ask you first now answer or else, Issei snorted. Or else what brat? Said brat growled at him and within seconds golden ripples formed behind him. Out of those ripples came different weapons of varying looks and sizes causing the group to gulp. This fool you will fall to the power of the gates of Babylon. Consider it an honor fool as few have lived to see the power of the king of heroes and the son of the supernova. Lady Fenex froze. Wait you said son of the supernova does that mean you're? He looked at the woman closely but then realized he had seen her face on the statue they are looking at. So withdrawing his gate he bowed his head. Yes my name is Gil. I'm the oldest child of the supernova and one of his wives. I'm also a descendant of the Gilgamesh bloodline and considered his second coming by my mother. Indeed son but I wish you would not be so rude to our guests. Out of the house came a woman and most of the men blushed or drooled at her figure. She had a white bikini top that covered her breasts but she had armor on her left arm. The red marking tattoos on her body drew attention from the group signaling that she was another descendant of the great hero Gilgamesh as all descendants that unlock the bloodline have these marks on their body. Next she had on a red cape coming down from the waist and touching the ground or at least close to touching the ground. On her legs she is wearing a matching pair of gold armor that covered everything and had a front plate hanging down. The oddest piece is the horn that is coming out of her forehead to complement her blonde hair that is done in two pigtails. Her blue eyes were looking at all of them with boredom and mirth. Sorry mother. He bowed to his mother and turned back and huffed at his guests. I guess I can allow you mongrels to worship the bloodline of the oldest hero and be grateful we allow you stand in our. He was scooped up and soon found himself smothered in the breasts of Lady Fenix. Kawaii I'm finally a grandmother. Look how adorable you are, I'm going to spoil you rot and I swear I will. She started looking over the child and had no doubts that this was Naruto's child given he had a similar facial structure as him. The woman giggled giving her son a look that he froze it and just stayed in the embrace of the woman. Greetings everyone. The woman bowed causing her breasts to jiggle from the gravity of the drop. The men perved but the women quickly smacked them for this. I'm Angelica Ainsworth, descendant of Gilgamesh and my husband's third wife. The group is shocked but Issei expressed the shock. Third wife. You mean this guy has more than wife here, she giggled. Indeed my husband has five wives, many girlfriends, and also, she turned her head and saw a blonde hair child younger than her son kick the door open. She had on a blue dress with armor covering parts of it. Her hair had a bun done up and holding some of the long hair from falling behind her. Gil Ni you were supposed to help me train today. Where are you? She looked up and saw all the people surrounding their home and feared the worst. She was about to summon her weapon but Lady Citri looked at the child and asked. Is this another child of his? Another voice answered. Yes but this child is mine. Out of the house came a woman wearing some kind of white bunny ears, long blonde hair with it done in a ponytail, and wearing a very tight fitting top. It left a lot of cleavage to be seen, a white dress around her body with a blue fountain of energy to cover the front of the dress while having on some kind of blue bottoms and white leg length boots. Her eyes were locked on the guest while standing behind her daughter. Greetings my name is Amber Pendragon and this is my daughter Artoria Pendragon and the rightful heir to the Excalibur sword and Caliburn. This caused Kiba to freeze up at the mention of the sword but he repressed this feeling instantly. Knowing as a child she had nothing to do with them and if she is claiming the title that means she is going to take the swords away which he could be happier if she does not abuse the power of the blades. Lady Gremory walked up to the child and picked her up making her look at her confusion for a minute. What? She smiled and started hugging the child. You are so adorable. I have not seen someone as cute as you since my own grandchild was born please call me Venelana Obasan. The girl looked at her mother and she shrugged her shoulders but finally Angelica asked. Now can we know why there are so many guests to our home? Lord Fenex stepped forward. There is something we wish to speak about with my son and hoped he would be here. 
The two women frowned at this. Sorry but Naruto is not here right now he is off doing some personal training. In his own words, training never stops, just the will some people have to train. He will be gone for three days at the least. The group frowned at this but Zekram asked. Well until he returns do you mind if we stay here I promise everyone will behave. The women smiled. I don't see why not, given that we are family it'd be wrong to kick all of you out. Amber motioned the women to follow them into the house but after entering the large front of the house they saw a huge portrait of the supernova. He had whisker marks on his face, wearing royal garb, blonde spiky hair that went down his neck, and intense blue eyes. There he is the phoenix's supernova Naruto Phoenix. The group stared at the portrait in respect knowing the standing the man had at this point and they were standing in his home so many of them just took it in. Yo, who are these people? Everyone was taken from their thoughts to see a man with black hair walking up to the group, he had a tan complexion, carrying a black katana at his side, wearing a white sleeveless top, black pants and boots, and having a cigarette in his mouth. Yami surprised to see you today given your wife was insistent you stay with her for the next few days. Yeah wife finally let me out of the house says she was wanting me to go out and do something other than her. Most of the room blushed at the comment understanding what happened. So who are the guests and the one that is smothering the runt? Angelica laughed. This is the mother of our king. He looked at her for a minute and then the older male next to her. Bullshit she could be his sister for all we know. I mean the older male I can see but this woman no way she is his mother. The woman laughed. Oh heard that too Chan. Gil snorted at this and saw the man become flustered by the bluntness of Yami. But the man looked at him and asked. So what are you planning to do today runt? Gil growled. I was going to kick your ass but I guess I'm spending time with my grandmother. Yami smiled. Sounds fun, I'll join you guys. The group nodded their head and started walking around the house showing them the different places to explore at a later time in the living rooms, formal rooms, and even showing them Naruto's private hot springs he had set up. But when they arrived at those two women exited the room and Issei shouted. Oh pie. Standing there was a green hair woman with a towel hanging over her shoulders covering her breasts and a towel wrapped around her waist making her sexier. The blonde hair woman was doing the same thing while sighing at the sight of another pervert in her presence while being a similar dress. Angelica nay who the hell are these people? The woman laughed knowing Brandish was not one of the most understanding people after she had bathed. These are friends and our in-laws of Naruto-kun. The green hair woman frowned at how weak most of the group was and seeing three people specifically looking at her and Samui, her best friend, with perverted looks she held her hand out and a magical circle appeared. From there everyone saw the circle appears appear on Sona, Issei, Saji, and Riser. The three men screamed seeing that their crotches were turned micro while Sona blushed at the sight of her breasts stretching her top and almost popping out of their shirt. More in the case, they are having their buttons pop and this sends Seraphal flying backwards with a nosebleed. Hum, what do you know? These so-called men did not have much to shrink in the first place how sad. She grinned at the men and felt a dig at their manhood, but then again not everyone is like Naruto he needs no one to enhance him as he is already blessed. But given that I can see his mother there is no shock, it was true among the women in the room Lady Fenix was probably one of the most endowed and made most women look like cherry tops at this point. Please could you turn my breasts back? I'm not enjoying the newfound back pain I'm suffering. Sona was rubbing her back and Brandish smiled knowing her pain undoes the damage done to her. I don't envy those wanting bigger breasts like that it is pointless in my taste. The women laughed at this while Rias and Akano pouted at the comment and Kaneko felt more vindication for her smaller chest. Anyway these two were Brandish the army destroyer and Samui the lighting dragon goddess. Everyone stopped laughing at the boys who were changed back to normal at the names. Brandish was known in the underworld but for some reason both Saji and Issei's gears were shaking and wanting to stay hidden while Samui smirked at the boys. I guess Diedrig and that pussy Vitra don't have the balls to face the lighting dragon Tiana no surprise. She walked away from the group, I'm going to get dressed now. Same it is tiring to deal with perverts. Brandish walked off and Angelica and Amber laughed while Gil commented dangling from his grandmother's arms. To think this is the most modesty they have shown is something to behold. Yami laughed. Yeah there was that one time all the women walked around naked for your old man. I swear I thought the boss was going to end up having children with all the women here. This caused the perverts to blush men and women, and thus the group was turning their minds to be away from such thoughts. So how about we continue, 
Out of the shadows came a blonde hair maid with one bang covering one side of her face. She bowed to them showing off her large breasts and black sexy maid outfit. Forgive the interruption, but Lady Fenex requires the attention of everyone here. Everyone looked at her, but she shook her head, I mean to say Naruto-sama's wife wants everyone to gather in the kitchen and that is the first wife and the mother of his youngest child. Okay we will head there. Soon the group followed the women in question to the dining hall and saw that food and refreshments had been set out for everyone. What was surprising was that Zekrom and Lady and Lord Fenix were given high quality chairs to sit in and relax while Gil and his sister sat in the laps of the women in the room being traded every few minutes. The maids were waiting in the corners for the main wife to show up but Issei finally got tired of being quiet. Okay where is that asshole? I mean seriously shouldn't he be here to look after his guests already? I mean someone has to have told him that we are here no? Yami being annoyed with the brat took his head and slammed it into the table leaving it broken on impact and him hitting the floor face first. Brat you don't make demands of Naruto Sama or his family. If he is away he is away and you better damn understand this got it. He gave the entire room an evil look and everyone shut fearing the man and his insane strength that he displayed. Please welcome the queen of devils and the youngest child Elisa. Out of the main double doors came someone that had the whole room frozen in shock. It was a woman with long silver hair, sliver eyes, and wearing a long silver dress that hugged her incredible figure tightly. In her arms was a cooing baby and she had silver hair but blue eyes like her father. Standing there was Grafia Fenex Lucifuge, first wife of Naruto Fenex and mother of his seven-month-old daughter Elisa. Chapter End To Be Continued